Hi, Floss Tomb. This is Barb with Lost in Floss. Welcome to my channel that's primarily about cross stitch, but sometimes a few other crafts thrown in as well. If you're new, I hope you like what you see. I have a lot of finishes today, so I'm hoping that you'll stick around and see what I've been working on. <laughs> today is March 15th, 2023, and this is video 87. Just plugging along. along. Um, I think that I last recorded over two months ago, which is kind of a long stretch uh, scene, especially I want to do some giveaways. So, um, but there's been lots going on lately and um, maybe, maybe I'll talk about that at the end. I, depending on how long this video is, I might be chunking it into um, one or two pieces, just, well, not Two or three, I should say. <laughs> oh, duh. You can't chunk one, right? <laughs> Be kind of hard. Um, well, anyways, uh, so like, I, I, I have no idea how long this is going to be. I do have quite a few finishes to show. And so, um, and stitching on a number of things and some fun pictures for the end. So, uh, and oh and most important um we have a milestone giveaway and so i have charts that i want to show you that you'll be able to enter a drawing and um someone will be lucky i was furiously finishing <laughs> maybe that's what i'll call it instead of finish it up february furiously finishing february uh I didn't, I don't think I even started anything new and it wasn't even a conscious decision. It was just, I had a lot of love, Valentine-y stuff that I wanted to finish. And then, you know, once you have the stuff out, it just like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting better about like making sure I finish things in a more timely manner. So that's pretty exciting because that was not what I was all about. And maybe that's because I'm really, I don't have a ton of things in my to finish box. So that's pretty exciting. But anyways, we'll, we'll save chit chat for the end. But I have some things I want to show you. Um, so, and at the end, be sure to look at, at the pictures at the end because I've included some of the exchange gifts from our cross-stitch group, um, our Christmas exchange, which actually happened in January after the last time I recorded. And so um, you'll be able to see the things that um, everyone created, which uh, I, honestly, I could have gone home with any of them. Um, this is the piece that my friend Vicki stitched for me, and I love it. It's nice because it can stand on a table or on a shelf, or you can hang it on the wall. So lots of uh, different places that we can end up using it. Um, I'll insert a picture here of the piece that I stitched. It was a freebie chart from Corey Bettemore. <laughs> I'll try to put um, in the show notes, I'll try to put information on this stuff because things that were freebies, so it's always great. But um, as you can see, this is the chart, which I will show. And I finished it into a little pillow, which... Um, I think Linda liked <laughs> so but moving on to other things I did this little I had bought at River's Edge Antiques and Quilt Loft which is in northwestern Wisconsin a beautiful little quilt shop that I'm trying to every time I go in I ask for crotch stitch stuff so I'm trying to to uh, convince her <laughs> to carry some of that stuff but anyways um it was this cute little kit that I bought. My little Valentine wool applique 
And um, I can't believe this worked out so well. I was gonna paint this frame and then I looked at it with this piece and I'm like, that's just perfect in there. So I just popped it in and I was done. So I'm happy with how that turned out and it will be nice to have it next year. Then I stitch Frosty's Night Out by Blackbird Design. Really cute wintry piece. And let's see. So that's how he looks. And then I just use this. My stitches are not perfect, but, and it looks like it's on an angle. It really isn't as bad as it looks. But, um, yeah, I, I'm glad to have that. And it's kind of fun to have a drum. You just get dimension and set it to go. And that's how it is. So this is another freebie by, let's see. Colleen Carrington, World Stitches. Doc. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. So this is called Love Heart. Well, it's called Love. And um, I think Colette from our stitch group brought, printed out um, charts for everyone when we met. And so I I had it pinned already, but I was like, I, I just have to stitch that. And I happened to have this little plasticky heart. And just popped it in. I'm not sure what the, um, it was just a scrap of pink linen, but the red I used was Buckeye Scarlet. So, that makes a nice addition to my Valentine wear. Okay, this is another freebie from Prim Primitive Hair. And it's called, it's, it was a freebie from 2014 on her blog. And it's called Love Never Fails. I stitched this on 30 count vintage country mocha and I used Gentle Art Shaker Schoolhouse Red. I used my own lettering for the current year and also added a few additional hearts to fill in the space. And then I just used this cute print on the back. Sorry, I, I never covered anything or covered, put anything on to cover the uh, where I stuffed it. So some of these little pillows I find easier to slip the backs and then um, stitch them up and put something over it. It just, when there's such a little amount of stuffing, the corners I think are easier to get looking better. Um, then I had, when I was at Buttermilk Basin, I picked up, I was smart because I didn't pick up all Christmas. So I picked up these Three Hearts pillows. It was a kit. And I thought they were really cute. One of the colors in the kit, I think I subbed out. I can't remember which one it is. But um, this is a little blackbird with some plants and a heart. I love this, this backing it really looks like um, felt or wool, but it's a cotton. And then this is, I think I subbed out the color that came in the kit for the thread spool. That's the other one, it has the same green. It has the feather stitch, I believe that's called. And then the final one is this heart that I really like. And 
his little knot. So I think these, and that's cream on the back. I think these will be really, really cute to have going forward. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Oh, okay. Um, I know I've shown these patterns a while ago. I'm not quite sure what they are anymore, but I finally have them finished. And just the snowflake and the skates. I think there's two others that I didn't do. I think they're meant to be little ornaments, but I just put a kind of a wintry swirly looking print on the back. And I think these are cute because you can leave them out well into this time of year. I now officially am considering it spring, <laughs> even though we have like still an inch of snow on the grass. But I got out my Easter decorations in full force yesterday, so everything's kind of in disarray while I'm trying to figure out where things go and um yeah. Oh, and I, I just realized I have like junk showing here. And I don't know if I showed this. This was from <laughs> still have some left. Um Tammy made these for us from our stitch group for Christmas. It was really a cute idea. I won't tell her secret. <laughs> All right, continuing along. Um, so I felt like I was in kindergarten doing arts and crafts on this one. So I, I had stitched this last year and showed the, um, what I was going to do to finish it, but I never, never finished it. So it was this little nail box. And I just um, kind of all falling apart. But I felt like I was making my Valentine's box for grade school when I was doing this. So let, let me just take it out. I'll show you what's all in here. So it was just, you know, your standard um, box and unfinished. Pardon my glue strips here. Um, but I just, I, I Googled free vintage Valentine's or something like that. And then I just put some scrapbook paper down first with Mod Podge to cover the box. And then, and see, it's not even all the way finished on the inside. But I'm like, that's not gonna show. And then I had, this was um, something I stitched it's from a little, tiny little French book uh, design, and I loved it. And when I stitched it, it was on bright, bright white. I think this is Lugana. And, and like with the vintage look of the box, I just thought it looked too stark. It didn't go. And so I thought, hmm. This is not a huge piece. If I screw this up trying to antique it, I could stitch it over again. So what I did was I took walnut crystals. I, I took a paper plate, put a little blob of water on it. And then I separate from that on the other side of the plate, I just sprinkled a couple little walnut shells. And just one, I think maybe I added one, maybe two, and you have to stir it up really good, otherwise you get spots on it. And I just took a tiny little paintbrush and, and then before I put it even on the fabric, I blotted it on paper towel and I just gently, not exactly up to the red but went all around and kept going over it and going over it and going over it and you know some of the water bled into um the heart area but it was so diluted that 
it didn't touch the red, which was an over dyed. And I, just, I love how it turns out. I just think it gives it an old world feel. And I didn't screw up my red, which was even better. Um, and because I didn't have other things stitched, I just, this is not my best finish, but it's done. Um, so I, eventually I'd like to get some other letter related stitchy things, but I took some of my, um, my leftover vintage things and I just glued them onto mat board and then put scrapbook paper on the back just so I have something as a filler in there. This one's really cute. And then these hearts are just from like the bead section of one of the stores. Not even sure which one. So I was glad to get that one off my list. This one is another freebie. I can't think of who it's by right now. And I really, I need to do this over, but I might not because it's not even. And I, I kind of knew that when I was sewing it, which I should have just did it again. If I was making it for someone, I would have tightened up the border on the one side, but I'm like, oh, sometimes it, it really is good enough. I figure I can always um, put like something on top of it on that side. And then I can't say this is my original idea. Um, I think it was Gabriel Stitches on Instagram. I'll include a, um, her channel or her um, name in the show notes. But she had made a strawberry out of this freebie pattern and I just loved it when I saw it. So I, they say, um, copying someone is the best form of flattery, right? <laughs> but I did mine a little different and I cut out some wool pieces for the top and just put a little heart shape. I thought that would be cute. And then I used a clear button and just some floss. So I really, I love how it turned out. Maybe not quite as good as my inspiration pieces was, but um, hey, it's done. And then uh, this one was from, um, it's a Valentine Mini Bouquet 2. It was a freebie last year from Jeanette Douglas. I used 30 count vintage country mocha. Um, I omitted the white border around the outside but I think it really turned out cute. Then I put the year on and it's just got this cute, I'll call it homespun, I don't know if that's what it's called anymore. But my thought is I had found this at Goodwill for $1.99. It's got a little handle. And so eventually I would like to get some things that would fit in here and kind of spill out. Um, have to figure out the logistics so they're raised up enough that you can see them but I think that will be adorable and now let's see my favorite 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 finish for spring is by um a chart by Brenda Gervais from last year it was called the rabbit and the rose I stitched this on 36 count lakeside pecan butter. I had just a little scrap and um, I think I use mostly called for colors, but I just have it sitting in this little basket right now. But when I saw this piece right away, like some pieces I know I just, I have to have them and I have to stitch them, but I really am happy with how, how this turned out. It's got a lot of substance to it. And then this flower here, I tried to recreate as best as I could on the back. 
I probably should have given it a leaf too, but I was kind of lazy. But I think this is like one of my favorite spring finishes. I use some of my old lace and this is a piece of seam binding that I coffee dyed just to give it a little tone down. And I used Whisper for the tail so it's fuzzy, but very happy with how that turned out. Now for the whip portion of the show. So I really was hoping that I would get Prairie School or February done this year. But that didn't happen. <laughs> but I've made a lot, lot of progress. I'm just deciding, I don't think I want two groundhogs on this thing. So I'm going to choose one of the other motifs from uh, the little small box ones. Obviously, groundhog is out. I don't think I want the presidents. The, I like the little cabin, but I think it looks too much like um, the cabins on there. The love is cute. The heart is cute. I think maybe what's stopping me from the heart is the bluebird. So maybe if I would change their color. I do like the cherries. I think those are cute too. But I'll have to figure it out. So I know for sure I will get this done next year. Because it's, it's really pretty, pretty close to being wrapped up. So just this little box, got to finish up the border and then put all the white in. But that's mindless stitching. You don't even have to count. And I think I'm missing a color here that I need to fill in for the X. So definitely next year. As I said before, I think I have six of them fully finished now. And I'm not starting any new ones until I get these done. So right now I have, I'm working on February, March, maybe May. I haven't worked on May. So, okay, to go on, I might as well show this one. It's the March one, Daffodils. And I love this. Love everything about it. And I love the fact I can just do it just as is. I don't have to change a thing about it. Oh. I figure if I get the, the main part done, then the rest of it will go pretty fast because lettering goes fast. And I'm going to love stitching those little daffodils at the bottom and the top ones as well. So I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe it'll get done this year, maybe not. I guess it doesn't really have to be, so. Oh, I pulled out this one, Scarlet House, Strawberry House. I had really thought it was going to be like really, really quick. And those houses are killers. I mean, they're pretty when they're done, but I screwed up the counting. I couldn't figure it out. And I thought I could just work around it. And then it got to the point where I just had to pull it out and start over. But I'm almost done with the house. So once that's done, it'll be smooth sailing. <laughs> I think. Unlike this other one I'm going to show. I started this a couple years ago. I keep coming back to it every Easter. But I'm I'm ready to just give up on it and like start it over on some other fabric. Spring Fling by Brenda Gervais. And when everybody was stitching this, I had to have it. But I keep running into issues with my with this fabric. And I don't know. Like, I'm off one one way, off one horizontal, off one vertical, then I'm trying to tie them in, and 
I just, I don't like it enough to, like, I think it would be quicker just to start it over. But I'm like, do I want to do that? Or do I want to stitch something else that really speaks to me? So I, I don't think I've ever abandoned anything. I've always tried to make it work, even if it wasn't my favorite favorite. So I'm still plugging away on It's a Wonderful Life. I don't, I, I just have a, my working copy because I had borrowed the chart and I didn't want to squish up the original. But I don't like my door color. I didn't have the call for color. And so I am going to change that. But I have the bulk of the house and the roof really isn't too bad. And I just ordered my own chart now that it came out at market for everyone. So I will <laughs> return my borrowed one so that I can just take my time stitching this. But I really, I want to gift it, I think, to my niece. But I'm rethinking that just based on the length of time it's taking me to stitch. Because I'm like, will I ever really want to stitch it again? So here's another example of not giving up. After I used, um, this is Winter Houses from, Winter House Trio from Waxing Moon Design. And I had had such issues. I was using this light gray and none of the whites I tried showed up. And honestly, I could have stitched it over by the time I, I probably tried at least 10 different whites, white combinations, grays, blues. I had it all done in like a turquoisey color. And then I'm like, I, I, that's not snow. So finally, when I antique that love piece, I'm like, I'm gonna try that on this piece. And so I just did it really close to the over dyed colors. I ended up pulling out the white, like the white accents and snowflakes once I antiqued it. But you can, I mean, you can see how this is the color. And then it does, I think because it's synthetic maybe, or partially synthetic, it, it kind of doesn't soak in, but it bleeds. So I may have to go around the border a little bit so that... I'm going to make these into little pillows. And when I do, I don't want like the starkness. Um, but this one is, well, because first, before I antiqued it, I tried like just stippling some blue in the areas that were problems and that made it look even worse. And so now I have the blue under there and I kind of like it. So anyways, I finished up finally after I don't know how many years, snowy. And then I love these now. And then I just finished up windy. I like that giant, giant cloud that's blowing the wind. And then, so then I have the third one to do, so. I will, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep stitching on it this year, but I will get it done. And then I pulled out Summer Jubilee. I think it's called Summer Jubilee. Summer's Jubilee? Uh, let's see. I'm spreading false, false rumors what this is. Uh... Summer, yeah, it's Summer Jubilee. And this is by Blackbird Design, in case I haven't said that. And a lot of people have stitched this, and I had to as well. I think I'm using almost all Call for Colors. And I've got a ways to go, but this is on my radar for this year. 
I've got the flag done. I always like to have, you know, the focal part point. And I started this before my new system of keeping track of my linen colors. So I'm sure I mentioned it in an old video, but if you have to know, I will try to look it up for you. And then I did have one whip. I almost gave up on this. I don't know. It just wasn't speaking to me. Easter Wreath by T Tiny Modernist. And this I stitched on 32 count white chocolate, one over two. Because I didn't, I, I wanted it bright, but I didn't want it like in your face bright. So I thought by doing it one over two, it would be cheery, but not overwhelming. I think I used mostly the called for colors. I, I know I didn't use the called for green because I wanted something a little bit more in tones with the other bright colors. And I don't know, the yellow might be a little different too but I think a lot of the other colors are the called for. I have no idea how I'm gonna finish this yet. You know, maybe mat it on a circle and put it in a frame or who knows. Stay tuned for next time. And I don't know, I think I, did I show you the stocking totally done? I thought I did, but in fact, today I might go on a, a hunt for some backing fabric. I bought a piece up north, but I don't think that's quite right. So, in case I didn't show it before. Preston. Okay, back again with the giveaway portion of the video. So this is in thanks for the many subscribers that I've acquired over the years. I realize there's more and more channels to watch, so I appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch and comment. Um, it's awesome. So I would like to share um, some of the charts that I'm done with and also um, others have shared charts with me. And so, you know, uh, realized there's only so many hours in a day and we would, I'd rather see someone else stitch it if I know I'm not gonna get, get to it than have this crazy idea that I'm going to be able to stitch forever and, and do everything that I think is cute. <laughs> so anyways, um, the rules are, one, you must be over 18 to enter. Two, um, please like the video. And three, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And um, I think what I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to make another quick video in maybe a week. Um, so somewhere maybe around the 22nd on. Um, you can set the bell to be notified of when I make a, a new video and I will be announcing the winners in that video and maybe showing the few things I've, I've uh, managed to work on since then. Uh, for, so for first up is this cute mom Sam Sarah design. I stitched this a number of years ago for my mom. And she had it on the window in her apartment at assisted living. I did it as a flat bowl. It's really quick and easy. And if you have a mom and want to stitch it, please enter by you um, just writing the word mom. Another thing is you don't have to try to make a sentence with 
everything, um, every word. So feel free just to list them off because that's a lot of work. Uh, I stitched this. It's the work basket, work basket of seasons. And it's really cute when you finish it on this, these cardboard pieces. So if you would like to be entered for that one, please use the word seasons. Next is one that I just finished using. It's Happy Easter or Easter Wreath by Tiny, Tiny Modernist. And for this one, please use the word wreath. Heartstring samplery, permit me not to stray. Really, really pretty. And if you'd like that one, just use the word permit. Next we have Little Brown Jug. Um, this is Tempting Tangles Design. It's really pretty. And for that one, you just need to use the word jug. And then I still thought maybe I would get to this and I'm realizing probably will never happen. So somebody else should. Country Cottage Needleworks, Bless Our Home. Getting a little bit of glare. And for that one, just use the word home. And then finally, another one I just finished up myself, The Rabbit and the Rose by Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. And I love this. And I've also shown in the video my finished version of this. But if you would like that, just say rabbit. And since I haven't had a giveaway in ages, I thought I would also include a $25 gift certificate uh, to uh, either an online shop or a brick and mortar shop of your choice. And if you would like that, I kind of like to know like what what store you would shop at or um so if you can just say gift let's use the word gift um and and for that one just tell me where you would shop or if you live close to an LNS I don't know just tell me a little something I always find that interesting so um again you know, probably a week, 10 days at the most. So uh, if you see video 88 is out already, then um, the drawing has closed. But otherwise, I hope many of you enter. Thanks. And now time for the part of the video where I talk about what's on my radar coming up. And I see I lost one of the things that was on my radar. But I think tonight I'm going to start this Easter Parade by Blackbird Designs. I think it should go pretty quick. I'm hoping. So I'm probably going to have to adjust the colors because I don't have all the call for. But I'll figure it out. And then the other thing I want to start on is... Uh, needlework by Kathy Barrick. I've always loved this one. And not a lot of colors, so I'm hoping that it's not awful, awful. So I've got, I haven't quite decided on my palette yet. I've got like a bunch of, well, two different linens I'm going to look at and then um, some silks that I have. So figure out, I, I like the the model, so I'd like to figure out where, which colors would mimic this. This was one of Leanne's charts she had gotten at 
the stitching bee in Green Bay, which I've never gotten to yet, but one of these days. So, and I hope to maybe create one wool Eastery piece, wool applique, just so I keep, I feel like I need to keep working on stuff so that it kind of stays fresh in my mind. Okay, now for fluff. So if you're, if you want pure content, you can leave now if you like. Otherwise, um, stick around and I'll rattle for a little bit. Um, so last video was like maybe the first third of January. And after that, we had our gift exchange, which I think I alluded to earlier, just every piece I could have easily taken home. <laughs> Some quite a bit of talent and just creativity and just was a fun day. We had, we all brought things. So we had kind of a lunch, you know, snack type event and Linda got a uh, cake, the cross stitcherhood, the name of our group. And um, so have a picture of that at the end. That was really cute. But um, then just February started. I, <laughs> my uh, one little note was on Groundhog's Day, I actually stitched the groundhog in my prayer schooler um, February sampler. So I kind of thought that was fun and it worked out pretty, pretty good. Um, then I was getting close to my granddaughter turning 10 double judges digits, which I can hardly believe. So she decided she wanted a French themed or, um, birthday party at home. And so I asked my daughter if she wanted me to try making macarons. I have to say it right because she kept correcting me that it was not macaroons. It's, and then when my daughter played the spelling demonstration out loud, it's like, all I can think of is macaron, like Ron. So that's how I'm going to say it. If I'm wrong, please bear with me. Anyways, I, um, I <laughs> had a foolproof, you know, recipe from Pinterest. And I'm like, okay, you know, I baked, I can do this. So number one, it said to buy a certain brand of flour, uh, almond flour. I was too cheap to do that. So I think I got mine at Walmart and I could tell right away it was a little chunkier, but I'm like, okay, I'll just run it through my flour sifter more. Well, my flour sifter was old. That was taking forever. So then I tried to do it through a sifter that was taking forever. And the other tip, they said, measure out your ingredients. So I have a kitchen scale. So I'm like, I put my, put, and it, it was in grams. So I put my bowl on, zeroed it out and started cracking eggs. Well, we had just <laughs> bought a five, dozen box at Costco because it was at the height of the egg prices being astronomical. And so I'm cracking and cracking and separating eggs. And it's like, finally, I look and I'm a dozen in and I'm only at 120. And I'm like, how am I ever going to get to a thousand? It's going to take all my eggs. And then I'm like, you better look at the recipe again. I looked at the recipe. It wasn't a thousand grams of egg white I needed. It was a hundred. Oh, so no, I was at, so I was at 320 grams. So I'm like, well, you know, I'll just make a triple recipe. So that's when I tried sifting the flour. And honestly, that took me maybe an, an hour to get it all through because you're supposed to sift it three times. I think it had powder sugar mixed in too. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is still okay. It's just taking a lot longer. So I go and most times with egg whites, you know, when you whip them and they're real light and fluffy, you hand mix in the almond. And the recipe said, 
you know, put it back in your mixer and dump, you know, the flour in and turn on your mixer. Well, I failed <laughs> to read the, the full sentence. And I, I just looked down as I have now turned on my mixer and it says on medium for three seconds. Well, I'm well into it. So I quick turn off my mixer and it it's it's a large like five quart one. It had been way to the top. And when I looked at it, it's like this little puddle in the bottom. I'm like, oh no, this is not good. So being one to try to be resourceful, I'm like, well, I'll try to, I have, um, I think it's for cutting out biscuits. So like a little round uh, circular cutter. And I thought, well, maybe it's thick enough if I put that on the tray and pour it in it'll stay in that shape. Well, it was not thick, <laughs> thick enough. So I'm like, well, I'll just bake them. Anyways, so they spread out and then I'm like, this is going to take me forever and it's not going to be that great. So my next idea was to line a, a cookie sheet with parchment paper and then like put all the rest of the batter in and it flowed out to the edges. And I thought, well, I can bake it and hopefully like roll it up and do something spectacular for a filling. So did that when I tried to take it out of the pan, it just was cracking left and right. I'm like, this is not good. But my mom always was able to create something out of nothing. So instead of being like a jelly roll, I cut it into squares and then I just let it sit for a day or two. And so then I had these pretty little paper cups. And um, so I put a layer of that and then a layer of the filling and another one of the squares on top, just a, a dab of the filling on top and then kind of fluted a strawberry. It looks so fancy and at the party, the little girls were all, all grabbed one of those first. So I was like, okay, well, that's, that's good that they, um, they enjoyed that. So, and the party was a huge hit. They had, um, my daughter had purchased like little easels and canvases. So they painted and they played a game painting their fingernails or if they didn't want to paint their fingernails, um, they could, like trace their hand and then paint those nails and they really had fun doing that it was like you know you'd roll a die and dice and if it was a one it was like paint one nail if it was a two be like paint the nail of the person on your left blah 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 so you know it was a good time filler and then they had i don't know they had like mini quiches and french fries and um croissants, Nutella, uh, it just, you know, anything that kind of has a French theme to it. And uh, I made some mini eclairs and cream puffs out of my, I used my eclair tort recipe and used that for the dough and then used the filling on some of it, made a half batch. So it was fun. And um, my son-in-law was taking the three boys out of the house while the party was going on and so my I asked my daughter if anyone was helping her and she said no and she's like are you offering and I'm like well I'll come um to help and because it's it's just fun and at that age just watching them like paint their their pictures and it just it was a lot of fun we had fun decorating and it just it, it brought back lots of fond, fond memories. So while I was in, in Home Goods looking for like the cupcake liners, um, I, I was looking on one row and it kind of came to the next aisle. And then instead of it, the next aisle going straight, it hit up against a wall and took a little jog and then went straight. So I hear like, it sounded like maybe 16 year olds like talking 
on the other side. And so I was waiting to go around the corner because I thought, well, I'll wait till they clear out. So one kid goes around the corner and then I still hear the other kid on the other side of the wall talking. And then, then I don't hear either of them talking. And I wait a couple seconds more and I thought, okay, I, he must've gone around the other way. So I step out and right as I step out, <laughs> The second kid comes around and he goes, ah, and almost falls backwards. His friend and I were laughing so hard because the other kid said, you couldn't have planned that better if you had tried. And I, I just couldn't stop laughing. And I could even hear them that I was a couple aisles down and I could hear the two of them still laughing. I'm like, oh. I don't know if they were in there looking for like Valentine's Day presents for their girlfriends or or what it was, but uh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so um when the Super Bowl happened, I did a lot of finishing that day since it was kind of nothing to be very excited about for me. Um and then we decided <laughs> to head up north and oh my so I think that was well I don't know when it was anyways we hadn't been up there my husband had been up end of November and it had snowed like once really major in December and then a couple other good snowfalls well the early one had knocked down a lot of trees and so when we got up there we've got I don't know it's a about maybe two a city block and a half from where the town road ends. So that like driveway had all these trees down over it. And luckily my husband had his chainsaw, but the snow was up, it was at least to my knee. <laughs> and so just even walking any distance we had snowshoes on and that was maybe a little better but it took so long just to get into the house once and then we're like there's no way we're going to be able to drive in without clearing this so we got a sled and <laughs> loaded it up with the stuff that would freeze and our suitcases and everything else, including my stitching, <laughs> stayed in the truck. Like, I am not hauling this. Because, like, my my <laughs> snowshoes would get stuck under the snow. Like, I think it would go down the last two snows, and then all of a sudden you'd go down to the December snow. And then you it was like having big duck feet. They'd get stuck under the layer of snow, and I would fall over and then to try to get your feet out of there and up honestly it was just crazy well then the next day my husband has this it's just it doesn't have doors I mean just doesn't have brakes it's just a plow and to stop he has to put the plow down so anyways he goes out and he starts with that and then that gets stuck so then he's like, well, I'm going to take the snow blower out and at least make a path and try it that way. So he gets pretty far down and then the snow blower dies. So then it's back to we need to get the the Jeep out. So then we're shoveling, shoveling, <laughs> shoveling, and we couldn't get it out. I mean, just couldn't. So then we had to um, tie a tow rope to the truck and you know, try to pull with that. And I think then one time we pulled with the ATV and it was like every everything was stuck or broken for a while. So finally, like after a couple of days of this, we, we got at least a path, the truck was in, but we wanted to get it a little bit more cleared out. And blah, we have it mostly plowed out. He fixes the snowblower that's working again. Um, and I say to him, you know, it's good enough. Uh, if you get stuck, I'm not helping you again. So maybe an hour later, he goes out again and 
thought I heard heard the Jeep, but I'm like, well, whatever. And he comes in and he's always a kidder. So he says, yeah, I got stuck again. I need you to come out and help me. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm not helping. And because I think he's kidding me. And he's like, no, seriously, I'm stuck stuck again I can't get out and I'm like what did I tell you I told you not to do this again so after that it was pretty clear and um yeah so then we headed just for part of a day up to Minneapolis um just a quick trip to visit the new grand dog and he is really really cute and seems like a pretty chill dog so I'm hoping for my son's sake that's the case but uh yeah they seem to be very happy with the little puppy and um he's he kind of looks he's black lab and German shepherd and so he's got he looks like a lab with like the ears that stick up I don't know what that's called but anyways um yeah I I knew I needed to see him as a puppy because they are so cute when they're that size. But he has grown a lot and now I guess a fence is coming to help with the, you know, ability to run off steam right in your yard. So then we um, headed down to visit our friends in Florida. Uh, we flew down there and they came to pick us up at the airport and we just had lots of fun did some days just where we just were lazy around their pool and the weather was good it was near in the 80s or near 80 every day no rain um we walked every morning which was great um they had tickets to a play, so we went and did that. Then there was a, at the museum there, they had this car show, antique car show, but it wasn't like regular cars. It was all like prototype cars and one of a kind or one of three or very rare. And I guess they had spent, I thought they said five years even making arrangements with all the people to display the cars. So that was pretty cool. And, oh, um, my friend took me to Seaside Needleworks, and I thank my lucky stars that I got into cross-stitching instead of needlepoint, because I had no idea how uh, um, expensive the canvases were. I guess they're all hand-painted and, you know, some from Europe and whatever, and I'm like, made cross-stitch look really reasonable. <laughs> so I did get a few um like a a hank of silk that I figured I could use in cross stitching and then a couple of other threads that seemed like they'd be appropriate for um wool applique so um it was still fun to go there were a couple other shops in the area and just didn't have the time to get there then we just you know like Took some day trips, went to a baseball game, um, minor league, and then visited the Breakers in Palm Beach. And I mean, that was unbelievable. And I, we were in the gift shop and they had these hand painted eggs from Austria. And I'm like, I am not by myself any other souvenirs but I have an Easter tree and so those had to come home with me they were really really beautiful the one looks like it even has cross stitch on it I'll try to remember to put a picture at the end um so the one day was kind of funny we uh we were eating at a like rooftop casual restaurant and then afterwards we went down because we had seen a manatee in the water so it's like like a railing and then maybe a 12 foot drop in the water the uh, marina is there and whatever and so I had my hat on which I had bought new for the trip and I was so excited because I finally I have a big head and I finally found a hat that I really liked it, it was SPF and 
It fit my head good. And I knew it was windy, but I thought that I'd be able to grab it if it started to fly. Well, no, all of a sudden a big gust of wind and whoop, there my hat is in the water. And we're all <laughs> looking down at it. And at first it's floating and I'm thinking, you know, is there anything around? I, you know, I, I doubt they had anything, but at the one place my sister lost her hat, they had a pole because so many people lost hats, but it was like a little creek and much easier to get. While this, it sat on top of the water and then slowly <laughs> it went down and that was the end of it. And they kept kidding me that, you know, a dolphin was going to come up with my sun hat on, so I just hope they didn't eat it. But so. Um, so we had lots of fun there and then we took a road trip up to Charleston. Um, my first time being there, it's the cool old city and I got to go to Buck E's, <laughs> the gas station. Um, had heard about that for years from people, well not years, but I don't know, a couple years from people um, and Honestly, I couldn't believe how big it was. It was crazy. And I think this one had just opened recently. So it had like enough bathrooms like that a bus could come in and it wouldn't be a problem. And just, you know, nice and clean. And um, the thing that I thought was really funny was they had like a deli counter, but instead of deli stuff, it had all different kinds of jerky. I'm like, whoa. Well, that's kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, so then, um, what else did we do? Oh, we went to a rooftop bar and had a drink at this swanky place that, you know, like the pool is right there, and that was kind of interesting. Um, and then walked around the market there and we went to Fort Sumner and then the next day we went to the McLeod plantation and had a really interesting presentation um, from the slave perspective of the plantations and that was very you know I mean it's it's always it reminded me of being at Auschwitz because you just know the horror that happened on the ground you're walking on. And it it's just hard to able to. We were sitting um, having some iced tea at like another outside place that was on the water. And all of a sudden there was a mother dolphin and a baby dolphin just like swimming around like really close to us and they just stayed there for you know maybe like 10 minutes it was so cool because like the mom would come up and then right after you'd see the baby come up so that was really really fun to see um and there was the full moon when we were there so that was awesome and just stayed at a quaint little hotel that had a nice, you know, outside atrium courtyard. Um, so we could sit out there at night. And the only bad part was we had to get up at 4 a.m. to get an Uber so we could get to the airport. Our flight was like at, I don't know, six something. So, and we didn't want to make our friends get up that early. That's a lot to ask. <laughs> so, but, um, we had a layover in Nashville, and that's always nice because we figured out that there's usually music playing by the Steak and Shake, I think it is. And so we just parked ourselves there for a while, and I read and, you know, just listened to the music. So it made the, I think we were there for maybe two and a half hours. It made that time pass much quicker. So then back home, um, trying to do lots of walking and it had snowed here a couple times, but it's like, mm, I don't mind it so much. The sun is stronger now. So, you know, anytime it snows, it's not going to be around that much longer. So that works out pretty good. So, um, have a couple, uh, upcoming, babysitting gigs coming up um the 10 year old the night of her um 
I think it was the night after her birthday party. Like two nights later, we were watching them. And as we're talking, she's, she's like, you know what the best part of being 10 is? And I'm like, no, what? And she goes, I got a bedtime raise. And I'm like, what? She goes, I got a bedtime raise. And I'm like, a bedtime raise? She's like, yeah, I can stay up 15 minutes later on the weeknights than I was before and 15 minutes later on the weekend. <laughs> I'm like, oh, is that what your mom called it? She's like, no, I just I just thought of that on my own. <laughs> so I was laughing because I'm like, oh, that's a good way to look at it. It is kind of a bedtime raise. <laughs> so she's, she's just so much fun. And uh, the, the little guy after um, us being gone, he was a little bit reticent to warm up to us yesterday. So when we stopped in the afternoon, so I just pretended I was sleeping <laughs> so he wouldn't get mad that I was there. And then little by little, he, he got, you know, warmed up to us again, but it's just funny, you know, it's like, never know what they're gonna do. Okay, that's a lot of rambling. So um, I guess, you know, I'll be back soon. Um, to announce the winners of the giveaway. And um, again, I indicated what the rules are. And um, yeah, I hope, hope um, some of you will be interested in some of the charts that I have. And uh, maybe I'll do it again because I seem to have a stack of, of things that I need to, need to be gone. I I've been still trying to organize my sewing room and you know sometimes I make progress and sometimes I don't but I have to say there's not too many piles on the floor anymore so that's always a good thing so um let's wrap it up right <laughs> I have nothing else um thank you for watching and uh, I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. And please continue to fill the world with love. And if you're Irish or like celebrating, happy St. Patrick's Day. Toodles. Bye.